Welcome back to Cat's Core Play Shining Force 2. My name is Bobby. I'm Kevondre. And I just burped really loud in the microphone. I hope Kevondre doesn't keep that in the recording. I'm not planning to. Okay. <laughs> but also, Mr. Cat is here. Yes. So you might hear some meows and purring, and Mr. Cat just being an asshole. He's probably going to rub on the microphone or something. Yeah, he does that. Alright, so last time we beat up Camila, she got set on fire and sent to hell. We hopped on the NASCAR ship, turned left, got shot down. Yeah. You know, very Dale Earnhardt of us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, made our way back to Grand's Island. Shot down by a Frenchman of all people. Right? So, that happens. And uh, I read some story. Right. We looked up uh, some fetishes. We uh, recruited Sheila, another mastermind. It was a very, very, you know, heavy... It <laughs> eventful. That's yes. the word I'm looking it's for. It's a very heavy episode. Yeah. Man, we really poured out our feelings. Yeah. And, you know, not normal heavy like most normal people think, but really that nihilistic, deep, emotional, soul heavy that the emo kids wouldn't shut the fuck up about back in 2007. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. No, that's that not what that episode was. That was a good. All. That was a good time to be an emo kid. That's the year that uh, Black Parade came out. Mm. It's never a good time to be an emo kid. Or was that 2006? I think it was seven. You're still alive. Gasp! Get more wine in me. Unbelievable! You really are persistent. This is not the fight I thought it was. Oh shit! Dick, a dick. We'll never stop. We will not die until we destroy all of you. I will not <coughs> die. Cactus, kill him! Where's the fight that I'm thinking of? I don't know, I have no brain fire. We have to kill him now! I'm very sorry, but I have to go. He this didn't one, teleport very far. This fight takes a while just because of the terrain. Don't let them advance! And they incorporate a new mechanic into the game. Cute. He escaped again! Son of a biscuit! Gasp sure is a tricky devil! After him now! So now we got three Master Monks. Hooray! We OP now. Alright, let's take a look. See, it's mostly this big open space. And shit around. Until you get like here, where they're all there. So it is like they did throw a battle versus battle into there. I think this guy is the main bad guy. Um, these weird ass fucking flowers. Maybe I have the present battle was after this. I don't know. Okay, but it kind of sucks because of the terrain, and you have to go like so far down. And in my previous runs, I would actually use this map to level up Sheila and all them. Just let everybody else die, get the three Master Monks, and they just heal each other in a circle. And you can just level up really fast that way. Nice. And when you egress, you just go to the Monk Village that's right there and just whoop, back up. Alright. So, I've got some of these Red Velvet Cupcakes from Walmart. Yes. And I love red velvet cake when it's made well. Yes. And I love cupcakes and all that stuff. And you love Walmart. I, I do. Because I'm cheap. And uh, these are pretty good. But I always stick them in like the fridge or the freezer. And I do that with just about every type of candy. If I'm craving Hershey's or Reese's, it's going in the Reese's. fridge. Reese's is. Reese's. Uh, oh my god. It's going in the fridge. <laughs> That's right, it's on the channel now. No. I'm gonna beep it. You motherfucker! <laughs> I didn't beep it. He might. He doesn't know. We haven't edited it yet. I'm, I'm saying it right now. I'm not gonna beep it. Just so that you guys can hear the blasphemy that's coming out of his mouth. I if know. I say it again, will you bleep it? No. I bleep it from this point on so everybody knows. No. Why not? Because the beep is really loud. <laughs> and jarring. We gotta find a softer beat. Yeah. Or replace it with audio from something else. You should... Yeah, that that's good. I just replace it with, like, Kit Kat. Yeah. Speaking of cat, hello. Hello, cat. No, we just say, like, we have a list of swear words or things that we read out that could be substitutes, so that way if we need to sub something out, 
We ripping off Craig Ferguson? I suppose. I mean, if you're gonna rip somebody off, you might as well rip off the best. That's that's true enough. You know, you're not gonna rip somebody off and get a C. I like that. I miss his version of the Late Late Show. I miss it a lot. He's got a podcast now. I haven't listened to it yet. I just can't do podcasts. It's too hard for me. Yeah. I'm. Bobby's currently reading um, the Super Powered's books that I've talked about a lot. Reading with air and he's he's words. using audiobooks, which is amazing, and I love it. That's because it's fucking hard to find them in print version. And he refuses to use a Kindle. Yeah, that's true. I really should get one of those. You're I don't like them though. Gonna have to for the fourth one anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know. Or you just use your phone. Yeah, that. Um. Anyway. Or a laptop with an e-reader. Yeah, whatever you want, man. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm done. Um. And it's... I've, I've noticed that I shouldn't encourage him to do audiobooks. Even though I think that... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because even though, like, it's great for when he's, like, playing Xenoblade 2... And just listening to it the whole time, or when he's at work and listening to it the whole time. That works perfectly. But then he'll listen to it just in his room, and he'll fall asleep and miss three hours. And then he'll go back to some time, but he'll still miss some shit and just be like, Yeah, I'm not going to go back and listen to it. I'm like, but you missed important shit! So I don't think I can do that anymore. Yeah. It bothers me a lot. So I'm not going to encourage you to listen to audiobooks. Thank you. I'm still going to encourage you to read real books. I, if I have no other choice, I will. Ha have you read Norse by Neil Gaiman yet? No. Do you have another choice? Yeah. What's the other choice? I could get the audiobook if I wanted to. Wasn't he the one who read that audiobook? Yeah, I will fall asleep because his voice is really boring and does not sound like Alan Rickman. But... <laughs> I'm not over that. It's wrong. She's wrong. Do we need to do one of those little, like, photo mashups where it's Neil Gaiman and Alec Rickman and they meld into the one person and you just do a big, like, red circle with a cross across it going, Burr. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how to do that. Okay, let's pretend that we did that. You guys pretend that that just happened and yeah. laugh really hard, okay? Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> like, if you're Benedict Cucumber Pants, fine. Right. That's, that's a very close Alan Rickman voice. It's really good. Neil Gaiman is different. I wouldn't say that they have the same voice at all. Like, I I guess I could see why people would say that they are kind of similar, maybe. But that's as close as I'm willing to give it. You dig me? Yeah. I do dingle dig you. Trio, trio, trio. That's not something we made up for the channel. That's just something that we say. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. From the episode where Ekans and Coughing evolved. Yeah. And it's just like, dig -la dig dig -la dig trio 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 That's very important. We do say that a lot, actually, though. It's, a, it's a, a little sad. Well, you know, every channel has its perks, things that the person says. You can't be entirely original all the time, because eventually you're just going to wear yourself out. That's true. I am literally never original. That's true. Every okay. Everything that I have is a sponge effect of everything else that's around me. I try very hard not to be original. Yeah. Oh, speaking of original... I was going to read my fanfiction. Oh, yes, that's right. My dad used to always say, if you're stealing from him, you're stealing twice, because he stole it from somebody else. Right. Okay, so, I published this in 6-20-2005, so I would have been almost 14. We bad. Almost 14. And then, um... We bad. Oh, shit, there was a, uh... Review in 2015? Oh shit! Hi, I hope you are still alive and well. Do you plan on updating any time? Well, no. Maybe? No. Um, <laughs> why would I update this story that I wrote three chapters of, like, more than ten years ago, and was bad? Most people don't check the dates on shit. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't even check names on shit. I messaged them this the other night. Somebody posted a thing on Facebook and they're a friend. And, but I didn't see that. All I saw was the post at first. And it was some shit, and I'm like, ah, this hurts me. I'm not particularly disagreeing with that point. It just bothered the shit out of me how wrong that thing was. 
Um, <laughs> but I talked about this huge paragraph explaining why that's wrong, the whole history behind that, pulling up etymology sites and all that stuff. I had proper citations in there, and then I looked at it, and I'm like, I should probably double check this. And I realized it was from a friend, and I had to delete all that work. Mm -hmm. Because I did not want to start that fight. Right. Um, I so, felt so bad. Anyway, I believe that this fan fiction, I wrote it before Half Blood Prince came out, but that must have been only like a month before. Okay. Um, Good I'm timeline. Reasonably sure that that was 2005. July 2005, because it came out like right, right at my birthday. Um, so, this is. At the height of my reading fanfiction thing, and I'm very bad at it. Am I doing... No, okay. Never mind. Never mind, Charlie. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Never mind, Charlie. So, the first chapter doesn't matter. Um, it's just <laughs> it's just all of them meeting, and the whole the whole concept is that the, the ships that I was shipping, they saw each other and instantly fell in love or whatever. Of course. You know, That's basically the gist of the first chapter. While you use actual writing, where you can just be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Ron and Hermione meet on the train, and they're like, oh, I'm instantly hooked. Um, and then Harry saw Ginny at the state at the train station, but she wasn't starting Hogwarts that year. So I didn't write a lot for Sorcerer's Stone. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it wasn't much. But, I need, where's the second chapter? Year two. Okay. This is the good part. And by this I mean, I haven't read this in many, many years, so it's probably very bad. Yeah, this isn't somebody else's stuff. You wrote this. Oh, sorry, pump the stamp. Uh, this is going to be great. I've never heard this one before. Yeah, from when I'm a very early teenager who's just been doing nothing but reading fan fiction all the time. Nothing but teenage angst. I don't know about angst, but it's going to be bad. Like, you had Potter Puppet Pals level angst. Yeah. It's it's gonna be horrible, I'm guaranteeing this. But, so this is basically me rewriting Chamber of Secrets. Okay. And it's probably gonna take up the rest of the episode. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, is there anything else we want to cram in here beforehand? Uh, up to you. Anything you can think, you can think of? Um... Papa Booey, Papa Booey, how is your space? Papa Booey, Papa Booey. Yeah. Okay, there we go, we're good. All right, so uh, spoilers for Harry Potter. Year two. Disclaimer. Don't own shit. <laughs> it was summer. It was three weeks since Harry had successfully saved the Sorcerer's Stone from Quirrell. But the odd thing was, none of his friends had written to him. Not Ron, Hermione, or even Ginny had. He hadn't even gotten a Hogwarts letter. He wondered if he had even had friends, or were they just in it to be associated with the boy who lived? His uncle screaming for him from downstairs snapped Harry from his train of thought. He sighed and stood warily, slowly trudging to the door. Once Harry had successfully come downstairs, he walked to the living room. There he found his uncle Vernon placing a bow tie on his glob of a son. Harry turned to notice his Aunt Petunia placing plates, silverware, etc. on the table. Ah, the dinner speech again, Harry thought. Vernon observed that his nephew had come to the room, finally. He walked to, with, he walked to the back. All right, seeing as how Potter is present at last, we will go over the procedure. Dudley, you will be where? He asked his son. I'll be at the door, taking their coats and hang them up. I'm pretty sure that's not what you mean, Harry thought amusedly at Dudley's stupidness. Excellent, and you, Petunia? I'll be in the lounge, wel waiting to welcome them graciously to our home. Outstanding, and you, boy? I'll stay in my room, being inconspicuous and making sure that they are oblivious to the fact that I exist. A good plan. See, this is me doing that thing where when you're 13 and you like to cram a bunch of different uh, big words into a sentence to make you seem smart. Yes, because you don't do that now. Not like you do when you're 13. That's very or fair. Or John Green does when he writes a book. That is also extremely fair. Fault in Our Stars is not written how anybody actually talks. I like John Green, but that book made me mad. You like John Green? I think that he's really funny. The actual person. I don't I don't care about his books. He's worth watching on YouTube and shit. Uh, as long as that means that you're not existing, then you're bloody right. Now eat and go. Harry walked over to the kitchen, grabbed a slice of Limburger you cheese, and trudged to his room. But when he walked in, he dropped his cheese. Still gross. <laughs> I have you and still gross in parentheses. Nice. 
Um, <laughs> it's not you're commentating. That's what is actually written. Right. That makes it so much better. What? Who the bloody hell are you? There was a small green creature clothed in a pillowcase jumping on his bed. I don't think that Dobby's green, but I don't know what I was talking about. The thing stopped jumping and turned to Harry. Harry Potter, sir! Tis an honor to meet you! I'm Dobby the house elf! Poor Dobby. He never saw it coming. Harry grabbed him by the ears and chucked him straight out the window. <laughs> Harry looked out and straight down. There was lying the lifeless body of this house elf. But Harry noticed something had fallen out of Dobby's pocket. Harry went down, went and grabbed his Nimbus 2000 and flew down to grab it. He picked up what looked like a stack of letters, all addressed to him. You son of a bitch, you intercepted my letters? <laughs> Harry, kicked, Harry kicked the corpse. He then chucked it into the trash can. Harry then looked around to see if the, co if the cost was clear. It was. Yes. So he flew back up through his window. Hey, better safe than sorry, eh? He opened his letters and read through them all. Surprisingly, many of them were from Jenny. Some were tear-stained, the ones proclaiming that he hated them, so that's why he never wrote back. Harry felt tears come to his eyes now. He wrote back to he wrote back to all the people who wrote to him. A hundred and fifty seven thousand eight hundred and seventy three word long letter to Jenny, a twelve thousand fifty six worder to Ron, and three thousand nine hundred and eight words for Hermione. He that used, seems oddly specific. He Why used, did you write that? He <laughs> used larger words than hers, so it was shorter, yet still got the point across. Harry wrote thirteen words for Hagrid. Thirteen words for Hagrid. <laughs> Once Hedwig had taken off a little bit low, Harry decided to start his homework. It was then that he realized how much parchment he used for the letters. Shit. Harry then prompted to figure out figure it out in the morning. He turned out his light and lay on his bed, the thought of the murder he committed not bothering him one bit. About fifty seven minutes and thirteen seconds later, Harry heard a car. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> That's exactly Why? the kind of shit that I used to do when I was a teenager. Um, I think it all stemmed from my sister saying that she wanted to have 2.5 kids, and I thought that that was funny as fuck, so I decided to be specific. Okay. Um, anyway. only got the one. Yeah, well, but she might have more, you don't know. Harry heard a car. He just shook it off. Privet Drive could have someone coming and or going. But Harry sat up when he saw the headlights come right into his room. He got up and saw a floating Anglia, and insert whistle here, was she a beaut? But that's off topic, sorry. Anyway, inside the car were all the Weasley siblings younger than Percy. For those who haven't read the books or at least seen the movies, <laughs> these people were Fred, George, Ron, and to Harry's delight, Ginny. The boys looked angry. Ginny looked tearful. Harry looked surprised. Get your fucking trunk, Potter, and get in, Ron said angrily. I don't know why he's, like, Scottish or Welsh or something. Yeah. Harry did so immediately. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. <laughs> he picked up his crap and chucked his luggage into, Fre into the Ford's trunk. He then hopped into the seat between Ron and Ginny. He looked at Ginny longingly. Ron, who began interrogating at once, brought him crashing back down to Earth. Harry, stop staring at my sister and look at me. We need to know why you haven't been writing to us. I've invited you over at least 96 times. Why didn't you respond? Poor Ginny was torn to pieces and thought you hated us, so what's going down? Harry told them the whole story, conveniently forgetting to tell them how he killed Dobby. Whew. We all thought you didn't like us anymore, Harry, Ron said, relieved. Hey, Ron, have you talked to Hermione? Harry asked, waiting to gauge Ron's reaction. Well, Harry got what he wanted. Ron turned about the color of a tomato. Well, er, my, yes, he said embarrassedly. All the guys laughed. Jenny looked confused. Why? Why is that making him embarrassed? Fred looked into the back seat, letting George take the wheel. <laughs> Fucking, that's like what you were telling me when someone would just like start drinking the stuff and you just take the wheel when you're in the passenger yeah, seat. Yeah, they'd, they'd go <laughs> grab a drink and they would just be like, Jesus, take the wheel. And then I was in the passenger seat, so I had to reach over and grab the wheel and drive from the passenger Spoiler seat. Spoiler alert, Bobby is Jesus. You're very close to his birthday. Not that that's his actual birthday. I'm just a guy, man. I'm not a carpenter. I'm just a girl. I'm not a carpenter. I know who my dad is. I'm just here. Well, Jenny. Okay. There's this thing that sometimes happens that's called love at first sight. I guess it's kind of like you and Harry. Everybody laughed except for said Jenny and Harry. They had turned the equivalent cover of what Ron had just become moments before. Everybody was quiet for 7 minutes 43 seconds until George broke the silence. Hey look, I already seen catch poles up ahead. We're almost there, guys. Harry said, look, the sun is already coming up. It was true. The horizon was glowing peakish. Three minutes and 17 seconds later, <laughs> Harry was, Again, was looking why? at an extremely large home complete with farm. The car landed and Harry recognized the plump figure of Mrs. Weasley stomping towards them angrily. <laughs> she yelled at them all. 
All the people rushed into the house and sat at the table. Mrs. Weasley gave them all a piece of toast. She didn't want them to starve, you know. They all munched on their toast wordlessly. Finally, she sat down at the head. As you all know, I'm very disappointed in you, all of you. Jenny, I expected better of you, of course. I'm not punishing you, Harry. It wasn't your fault, but the four of you must denome the garden. Damn, George whispered. They all got up silently. Harry stood too. Oh no, dear, you mustn't do that. It's dull work. But I've never seen a denoming before. Well, you can go, but I'm not sure why you'd want to. That's fair. Uh, this is so stupid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you wrote it. I wrote it. Live in your pain. I, I'm going to. It's just very long. Learn from it. Harry walked out. Ron was swinging this ugly thing around his head, which Harry concluded was a gnome. Ron chucked it, and it went like two feet over the fence. Wasn't too interesting. His eyes wandered over. He found Jenny's long red hair. Five minutes later, Harry noticed that he had been staring at her, working hard. She was so cute when she was all riled up. He didn't care that he was staring. Also, keep in mind that it's okay that I wrote this because I was like 13. And I understand that this is about a 12-year-old talking about an 11-year-old. So it's okay because I was 13 when I wrote this. Don't get all weird. Is it? Yes. Because I'm kind of weirded out. It's weird that we're reading it now when we're almost 30. <laughs> okay, that's a fair point. Um, but that's about it. And I don't really mind that we're weird, so it's all good in the hood, man. Are you sure? Yeah. I feel like we should mind a little bit. Eh. <laughs> I mean, maybe now that we're almost 30. <laughs> Id gaff. Eventually, Harry heard the Weasley boys stop hurling gnomes. They were staring at him. Finally, Fred walked over to Harry. Harry was oblivious to this. All that mattered now was Ginny. Well, Fred inconspicuously walked up behind Harry and clapped his hand on his shoulder. See something you like? Harry nearly jumped from his skin. What? what that's su supposed to mean? Uh -huh. Ron walked up. Mate, we all know you fancy Ginny. Admit it. Harry was scared that they were going to beat him up. What? Why would you say something like that? Of, of course I don't fancy your sister. Get off my case! Harry was blushing bright, bright red. He turned and saw Ginny running into the house, crying. Great, now they definitely were going to beat him up. Yeah, probably. George, Fred, and Ron walked me menacingly towards him. Once they were inches from him, they smiled. Dude, it's so obvious you like her. She likes you. Go to her. If you don't, we will have to curse you. Go or die. Mwahaha! George said. Nice. Shoutouts to being 13 and thinking that saying mwahaha was cool. Mwahaha. You have to understand, it was a different time. Right, this is where uh, RAR XD was a big thing. Scene kids were cool back then, not, you know, no, they weren't. laughing stocks. I don't think they weren't. They there were still laughing There stocks. was a brief amount of time when you're in middle school and scene kids are there. I've they look been. so grown up and cool. I've never been in middle school. Oh. Harry ran into the house immediately, just then realizing he didn't know where she went. Mrs. Weasley, can you tell me where Ginny's room is? Yes, I can, she said. Will you tell me? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> what a bitch! <laughs> Why did you put that in there? Because, Fuck you for that. Because I've dealt with teachers a lot when I was this age. Yeah. Um, oh, sure. Sixth floor, last room on your right. Oh, God. Fuck you, Kevin. From however, 13 years ago. I uh, Last room on you are right. Nice. Harry rushed up the stairs, not stopping once for breath. He found said room, knocked, and walked in. Ginny was lying on her bed. Harry walked over to her, panting hard. Ginny, I'm so sorry. Are you? Seriously, I doubt it. No, they were right. I guess I do fancy you. I guess. She sat up straight faster than you can say, oh. Are you sure? I've never admitted it, but I guess I do. Ever since that first handshake. Last year, I was at a loss without you there. But this year will be... He was cut off by Ginny, who had just sprung forwards, placing her lips on his. He relaxed into their first curse. It was not the romantic kind, not fierce, no tongue, nothing of that sort. There was a cheer from behind him, and then, with a jolt of realization, he remembered. He had left the door open. Crap damn it. <laughs> Crap damn it. Yeah. Love it. That was what my first girlfriend said a lot back then. They broke apart and turned to face the door where Ron, Fred, and George were standing. What was it you wanted me to come upstairs for, dear? Shit. Harry recognized Mrs. Weasley's voice. She peered in and noticed Harry and Jenny's intertwined hands. She jumped up and down. Jesus, finally! What do you mean? <laughs> that is not the reaction I've ever gotten. <laughs> what do you mean, finally? Fred asked his mother. He was all she ever talked about while she were at school. Jenny blushed, furiously, in fact. 
Mrs. Weasley was correct. Harry was all she ever talked about. Anyways, I don't care what you do as long as it's not sexual. What I mean is no BJs, HJs, etc. BJs and HJs. Yeah, because people refer to hand jobs as HJs. Do they? No. I'm the only one. Gross, Mom! All the kids said, excluding Ginny and Harry, who had found each other's eyes. They were staring at each other longingly. Of course they were. Ginny finally tore her eyes from Harry. If you guys could let us have some privacy, please? Oh, okay, Gred and Forge said at the same time. They closed the door. But they wouldn't. That's not their characters. What the fuck? Eh, they're into it. Immediately, Harry lunged at Ginny's mouth. She raised no objections. This time, though, there was tongue. Lots of tongue battling. Have you ever seen Kung Pao? The scene where the Chosen One and Woe are tongue punching? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. They made out for a few hours after that. Okay. Hours. So, hours. you have to realize that I had not experienced kissing at this point in my life. Of course not. Um, not until... Um, I came out meaner than I meant it to, but I stand by it. 2007. <laughs> so, fuck you. So, I, I don't know how it actually works out. Shit, you getting respawning foes? No, these are just normal spawning foes. It, they were not a part of the original map, and now they are. That's cute. Just man! Ron was sitting in his room upstairs, thinking about Hermione. He was working up his courage. He was a Gryffindor, after all. He got an idea. He jumped off his bed and ran downstairs, skipping five at a time! New record! When he was successful in his descent, he ran to the fireplace, grabbed a shitload of flu powder, and stuck his head into the fire after chucking the shitload into the grate. He said very clearly, Dan and Emma Granger's house, which I don't think is actually her parents' names, but okay. I, I think I just went Dan Radcliffe and Emma Watson. Probably. Okay, I can, I can live with that decision. His head was spinning, literally. Finally, his head came to a rest in the grate of the Grangers. He spotted someone on the couch. Excuse me, Mr. Granger! Dan awoke and looked at the fireplace and noticed a boy's head laying in it. What the bloody hell is this all about? Dan was scared. No, it's okay, Mr. Granger. I'm using the flu network. My name's Ron Weasley. Nice to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but it's over at my house. Is Hermione there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I kind of like that one. That was pretty good. Um, yes, just hold on a second. He ran off. Hermione came running in. Ron, are you okay? I only see your head. Should I call an ambulance? She said frantically. No, no. Oh, God. Fuck me, dude. Yes, fuck you, dude. I, I hate this thing that uh, fanfiction authors do where they abbreviate Hermione's name to Miney, which is yeah. what all of them do, and I apparently do it too. Oh, look at that. You, no. hate, you hate yourself. I do. No, no, Miney, calm down. Can you lay in front of me? I can barely see you. She did so, still kind of worried. Now, I'm using the flu network. Oh, I've read about that. It's like a telephone. What's... Telephone. Sorry, telephone. What's a felly tone? Oh, that doesn't matter now. Anyway, it's really lovely to see you, Ron. What's up? Well, I've gone and got Harry along with Fred, George, and Ginny. Oh, you actually did? And were you caught or seen? Only Mum knows as of present. Oh, can you hold on a second? I'll be right back, Ron said. Oh, sure. He took his head out of the fire, grabbed yet another shitload of flu powder, and said Hermione's house and all of him went this time. He stumbled out of the fire, right into Hermione. They were forced into a hug from this, and their lips collided. Because, of course it did. Neither of them was complaining, though. In fact, it was surprising. Hermione deepened the kiss. She stuck out her tongue, and he gladly opened up. She's uh -huh. penetrating him. Oh, good for her. <laughs> a few months later, they were back on the train to Hogwarts. Just, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, that happened. That, that's months it. later? A few months later, they were back on the train to Hogwarts. There was no Dobby to stop Harry and Ron getting on the train. Teehee. <laughs> Anyways. So there was only two seats occupied in their compartment, but there were four people. But wait! The girls were on their boyfriend's laps. It's England's favorite pastime. What the fuck? Neville came round and I have no idea what <laughs> was startled to find a first year perched on Harry's special place. He was not, however, to see Ron and Hermione. Finally, he thought. Ron and Hermione broke their kiss when they heard that the door had opened. The sound didn't phase Harry or Ginny. Oh fuck! All right. I'm Get them, soldiers! Putting this Run! on a hold. No, that should be about it. Oh, wait. No, wait! We're not Gallum soldiers! No! Whoops! My mistake! Oh, it's obvious! I can see it in your eyes! Feast your eyes! Yeah, okay. That's right. It's another town. Okay. Yeah, another town. Hi, Neville. Come on in, Hermione said. She scooted over even more to accommodate Neville. Ron was seriously getting turned on. 
Hermione seemed to notice that he was brushing her bushy hair with his fingers, and his erection was growing. He then turned and saw Neville. Hey, Nev, what's up? He, uh, he's a fan of the bush. <laughs> Good for him. Not much. I see you two have gotten together. Congrats, eh? But who's that Harry's with? That would be my sister, Ginny. Ginny, Harry, stop. We've got company. Nobody Ginny. but the dwarven blacksmith can work with Mithril. Oh, shit. Who's the dwarf? Oh, we encounter him later. Okay. Ginny broke from Harry and sat down on the seat next to Harry. She blushed. This was a bad first impression. Hi, Neville. Harry grumbled. He was much happier sucking face. What's up, Harry? Hi, Ginny. Nice to meet you. I'm Neville Longbottom. They shook hands. There was a knock on the door and a pretty blonde girl walked in. She had this permanently confused look on her face. She first stopped. She first looked at Ginny, moved to Harry, and stopped. You're Harry Potter. I'm Luna Lovegood. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's her whole introduction? Yeah. She looked now to Hermione and Ron, then she turned to Neville. Oh damn, it's happening again. They stared right into each other's eyes. They were instantly hooked. She went and sat next to him. She stared at him. Suddenly there was a loud shake. They were all looking around. Hermione fell off Ron and was rubbing her now aching backside. Don't ask her. Don't ask how, but some way they all knew. The six had come together. And the along, six? along with- The main six? Yeah. There was this whole rumor thing for a while after Order of the Phoenix that the six yeah. of them had like these together they were very very strong like they they had like a magical group thing mm -hmm. and then it amounted to nothing at all but I liked it so I kind of rolled with it see now I'm just thinking of the main six and I'm just going ah my little crack ship sorry yeah one of them didn't happen um and along with that they knew if one was lost or gone off somewhere longer than a 20-foot radius, they would all be weakened. But if they were all together, the aura surrounding them would be unbreakable. They alive, damn it. Um, <laughs> that part's not in there. Ron, Hermione, Harry, and Ginny returned to their previous activity, which, if you'll recall, was making out. Luna, Lovegood, and Neville just stared at each other for the remainder of their ride. Once they got off the train, Luna and Ginny ran over to Hagrid, who was yelling, First years! First years over here! Come on now! <laughs> I don't like that voice. Um, Neville and Harry were most put out that the girls left, but they dealt. They got into the horseless drawn characters, lazy ass illustrators. And Neville and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, did you put that in there? I, it's in parentheses. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Neville and Harry talked to each other while Ron and Hermione were yet again making out. Once they got at the castle, they got out and walked up to it. Just then, they heard an unpleasant yet familiar drawl. Well, if it isn't Potty Pants, Long John's, the Weasel, and the Mudblood. How nut- He was cut off at- He was cut off. At Mudblood, Ron turned around and socked Malfoy right in the face. Hermione oh, was confused. What's a Mudblood? Ron turned to her after kicking Malfoy in the balls. It's a really <laughs> foul name for someone with muggle parents. Oh, she turned and gave him another kick, right in the same place Ron did. So much for any more Malfoys, eh? Oh, yes. You know, because they were totally all about that bravado shit. Yeah. What? Yeah. Sir Petro, don't leave me alone. Passerin, I'm sorry. You promised to fly me in the sky. I know, with the NASCAR ship, I promised. I'd fly home to see my family, to show them how wonderful the ancients were. Petro! No! Por que? <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh, oh, we're having a moment with Zeke. Zink. Oh, I think this is where he actually joins. What's wrong, Zink? I have no idea, but he's obviously disturbed. Cactus Sarastral, I am angry. I cannot forgive the devils. I have overridden my restrictions on fighting. I am joining your force as a soldier. There we go. Zink the Ribbit. He's, Robot. A, he's a frog. I'm trying to remember what his attack does. I know at one point he like does a little laser chest thing. He can be really good, it's just he joins so late and it's so hard to level him up. I was just like, well, fuck it. Yeah. Let's go defeat the double army. There we go. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. That's alright. Uh... So much for any more Malfoys, huh? Ron was surprised, yet proud. Oh god, I love you, he said and kissed her. She blushed and smiled. Ron grabbed her hand and they walked into the castle behind Harry and Neville. They all walked straight into the Great Hall. 
Harry looked up. Hey look, the ceiling's malfunctioning. It was true. The ceiling showed it to be rainy and snowy. Though outside it was nice and warm. Strange. It should accurately depict the weather. Weird. Hermione said, matter-of-factly. Ron looked confused. He usually didn't use long words. He was stupid at it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So anyways, back at the ranch. Damn, I hate that phrase. My dumbass 8th grade math teacher did that all the time. Back at the ranch? Yeah. Ew. Yeah, it's very strange. Drama music? No. The, the group sat at the Gryffindor table. Just then, the large doors opened, revealing Professor McGonagall in front of a large number of first years, who, excluding Juni and Luna, who just looked like she was in the wrong place, that looked, sounds fair. looked terrified. They all followed McGonagall to the stage, where the stool with ye old sorting hat lay. She unrolled a long sheet of parchment. She looked at it briefly. Colin Creevey! A young man stepped forward, shaking from head to toe. He placed, he placed the hat on his head. Oh. It was a few seconds before the hat proclaimed, Gryffindor! Can we pause for a second? Oh no! That's the arm of the golem on the golem. Oh wee! Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> that feels good! My power is back, don't you know? Thank you! I can move again! How can I express? Oh yes, I'll join you! I'll protect you! I used him in my very first playthrough, and he is tank. Yeah. You can level him up, and he can take so much damage. He's a much better tank than Koopa? Uh, yeah. Then use him instead of Koopa. Nope. Okay. Uh, McGonagall looked at the sheet numerous times before it was another recognizable name. Luna, love good! Luna stepped forward. She sat and placed the hat on, whistling the whole way. She had the hat on a few more seconds than Colin did before it yelled, Ravenclaw! Harry clapped. Neville looked put out that she wasn't in Gryffindor, but he clapped all the same. Another whisk of names? What the fuck was that noise? It was special. Yeah. Th they're dead now. Yeah, they're all dead. They all fell. Um, another whisk of names. Finally, McGonagall said, Ginny Weasley! Ginny, being the last person standing, marched up to the stool. McGonagall placed the sorting hat on her head. It had been about three milliseconds when the hat proclaimed, Gryffindor! About three milliseconds. Yeah. <laughs> Harry stood and cheered and whistled and clapped as hard as he could. Ginny came and sat next to him. They kissed briefly, while the whole room went, ooh. Because that's what they do. Okay. Now they knew. Great. Frickin' A. Oh well, they could deal. Of course, they could deal. Yeah. They held hands under the table while Dumbledore stood to make announcements. Yes, yes, settle down now. New year at Hogwarts, Forest Forbidden, Lockhart is new DADA teacher. Tuck in. Oh, okay, sure. Let's just zoom right through all of that. Yeah. Everybody cheered. Most people were still looking at Harry and Ginny. All the girls thinking the same thing. Most. Eligible. Bachelor. Taken. Shit. All the guys looking at them thinking the same thing. I'd like to do that piece of meat. Most were talking about Ginny. Others, such as Crab and Goro, were talking about <laughs> Harry. Where the bloody hell was Malfoy? He wasn't there. Anyways, Harry was enjoying his chicken leg when he heard it. That was not a great voice. Please don't do that. What the hell was that all about? Harry asked to nobody in particular. What was what, babe? Ginny asked Harry, concerned. <laughs> oh, nothing. Just someone having the uncontrollable urge for meat. Just struck me as odd, that's all. He didn't want to worry her. Once the feast was over, Percy and some chick showed everybody upstairs to the fat lady's portrait. Wattle bird, Percy said. The picture swung forward. Everybody climbed through. Harry kissed Jenny goodnight and walked upstairs. He went into the dorm room and jumped on his bed, falling asleep almost immediately. The next week, Harry and Jenny were walking merrily down the hallway, holding hands. All of a sudden, Jenny shoved Harry into a broom cupboard. It's not polite to push, Geneva. Please don't sound like my mother. You'll ruin the mood. Fair enough. Now we gotta think. Oh, my leg. How oh dare you? Oh my gosh, you? it's like we're actually playing the game. This isn't just fanfictionreading.net. Look, I am into it. Now. I know. You keep interrupting me with all this thing that we're actually doing the channel for, and I don't appreciate it. Look, that's great. You're early! <laughs> Down you, Grand Seal Swine! But don't worry, I just finished my preparations. Yes, everything is ready. It's show thing. Time to slap at the base. Sir Astral, 
Why is he smiling? He believes this is the place where we will die. Cactus, be careful. All right, fly. All right. No, no, no! I gotta do my intro to the battle fuck thing. Fuck my tits. Slow the fuck down for half a second. Uh, it's okay. just a long fan fiction, so I'm trying to get it. Done. I know. I understand. See, there's the chest over there that you can't get. Okay. Because you can't. These fucking prison flowers—they're facing a direction, and it's kind of hard to tell from here. But pretty much, they can fire all the way up the map. There. That sucks. And they will hit every single person in their way. So this guy can fire all the way up here if he really wanted to. I think the AI sort of has a limit. Like, he's not going to start firing until I get right about this area. But his range is all the way across. Okay, so the prison flowers aren't units. They're just weapons that people next to them can use. No, no, no. They're units. Oh. They will fire all on themselves. Boop. Right across there. And it fucking sucks. That, that sucks. Yeah. So you're gonna see me checking where I'm at a lot during this map. Okay. You ruined the mood. Okate. Then she attacked him, her mouth on his, his tongue in hers, and you know that could that those sentences could mean 69ing, but that's not the case. They're just making out, you know. Uh-huh. Look, I'm 13, shut up. Um all of a sudden there was a loud bing bong! And they went from each other. The announcement afterwards said that everybody should go to their tower, so they did so immediately. Shortly upon arrival, McGonagall came in, followed by Ron and Hermione, who looked freaked out. McGonagall said, Our young Mr. Weasley and Miss Granger have made a startling discovery. It seems that Mrs. Norris, Mr. Filch's cat, has been petrified. There was a cheer from around the room. McGonagall gave them a stern look. It was silent. Would either of you like to tell your classmates how you found the cat? Both of them turned an identical shade of red. Harry knew this would be embarrassing. <laughs> Ron started. Well, you see, we were, um, walking down the hallway. And then we, uh, spotted something dangling from a torch. Upon closer inspection, we, uh, noticed it was Mrs. Norris. What else could I be doing besides walking? Were they fucking down the hallway? Just, like, he carried her and they were fucking while no, he was walking down? So... What the hell? What you do when you're in, in middle school and high school with your with your female collar, or your gentleman collar, is you start making out against the wall of lockers, and then you just roll your way to class along the wall. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I have uh, noticed this in, in my youth. Upon closer inspection, we noticed that it was Mrs. Norris. We hurried and notified the closest teacher, which was Professor Snape. He promptly told Dumbledore, and then Professor McGonagall called us all here. They neglected to mention that there was water on the floor. It didn't seem important. Now, all of you go to bed. It's already 9 o'clock. You will have long days ahead of you. Most of them followed directions, including Harry and Ginny. Ginny followed Harry upstairs. Once they were there, he pushed her onto a bed. More of this. Fucking hell. Right? I think that's pretty much how every fan is right now. Handed her the invisibility cloak. Just in case you want to come in later and cuddle, he said with a wink. She smiled, covers, covered herself with the cloak, and then headed down to her dorm. That seemed like the opposite of what she should be doing. They must have seen her going upstairs to the boys' dormitory. Why would she go invisible... Coming down the stairs, they think that she's still up there. Protects his reputation. He's got a girl up there. I guess that's fair. Harry laid down and fell asleep. The next day after charms class, Harry and Ron st stayed to talk to Flitwick. Excuse me, Professor Flitwick, can you teach us some things? Sure, Flitwick squeaked. We want to uh, learn privacy and silent charms, Ron, Ron said. Oh, you want alone times with Miss Granger and Miss Weasley. Flitwick does not fuck about, apparently. No. His dick is taller than he is. <laughs> the boys turned red. <laughs> yes. So he <laughs> taught the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair, right? Is it? <laughs> He's small. Yeah. But that he means, is this tall. Even if he was super small, his dick would have to be ginormous. Yeah. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Okay. He used Engorgio. He is the Charms Professor, man. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so he taught the boys. He even entertained them with a story of his youth in which he used these very charms. I'm scared to say what they are, but I'll say this. It had to do with dorms and Professor Sprout. Ew. Another week later, Ron decided to put the charms to the test. 
He made Jenny put a note on Hermione's bed for her to meet with him at 8 o'clock. He waited and waited, but she never came. It was 10 before she, he decided to go look for her. He got up and walked over to Harry. Harry, can I use your invisibility cloak? I need to go find Miney. She hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, sure. Actually, Ron, I think it's in my dorm. Let me go get it, Jenny said, unabashed. She ran upstairs and came back down with the cloak. She chucked it to Ron and put it on. Thanks! He put it on and went through the portrait hole. I forgot to record her with a fist. Oh, shit. She can't attack her shit. Lol, 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 lol. It was morning. Harry had just woken up. He turned to on his side to find Ginny sleeping quietly. Harry turned to see his alarm clock, which I don't think that he has, but okay. Let's assume that he does. He, he switched it off and noticed it was 6.42. Why? Why would that matter? What the fuck? Harry looked at Ron's bed, but Ron wasn't there. What the crap? Ron was too much of a sleeper to get up this early, and on a Saturday morning even. That's very fair. There was something fishy going on. Harry quietly got up as not to wake Ginny. He didn't give a shit about Seamus or Dean if they woke. Harry walked downstairs, still no sign of Ron, or Hermione for that matter, matter. He climbed through the hole. The fat lady was still asleep. He walked and walked through the halls. Finally, he came to the library. Harry was at the least surprised. There was Hermione, wide-eyed. There was also a girl Harry had seen before but didn't know. She was a Ravenclaw and a prefect. But one thing odd, though, was that there was a leg off to the side. Harry stared at it, he poked it, he then touched it, the top part. Oh shit. Harry pulled the invisibility clock off of Ron. Invisibility clock. Invisibility clock. <laughs> that would be a lot less useful. Um, it just starts going off and you're like, where the fuck is it? Shout out to clock stoppers. Um, he too was staring wide-eyed. None of the three were moving, but Hermione had a mirror in her hand. Why? He didn't know. All he knew was that he needed to get them to Madame Pomfrey. Harry ran up to the hospital wing. He woke Pomfrey and told her what happened. They rushed back down. She magicked three stretchers and lifted the students onto their own. Harry told her that he'd be right back. Yes. Sounds good. <laughs> he ran upstairs. He went to the tower. He went to his dorm to wake Jenny, but she was already down at breakfast. He ran to the Great Hall. There she was. He grabbed her and took her to the hospital wing. He explained on the way. When they got there, Madame Pomfrey was trying her darndest to wake Hermione without success. Darndest. Jenny was crying. Harry was almost crying, but he had to be strong for Jenny. Okay. Because, sure. Pomfrey looked at the arrival. I'm sorry, but I can't allow visitors as a present. Present, but I can use you. Can you go fetch Professor Dumbledore and McGonagall for me? I need their help. They ran back to the Great Hall. Awesome. Dumbledore and McGonagall were still there. Harry and, Randy Harry and Jenny ran up to the teacher's table. Professor Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Ron, Hermione, and Ravenclaw Prefect have all been attacked. They're in the hospital wing. I keep using the wrong yours and theirs, and it makes me so mad. You were a very dumb teenager. <sighs> I became a grammar Nazi at some point, I, but apparently not when I was 13. It's okay. I don't really forgive you, but I'm going to say it's okay, so that way we can move past this. Yes. The teacher stood. They all ran up the stairs to the wing. Lockhart ran along, too. He's a loser. He ain't got much <laughs> to part in this story. God, I hate him. Oh, well. They all ran to the wing. Dumbledore ran warily over towards the beds. He turned to McGonagall. Inform the students. She nodded and ran off. Dumbledore then turned to Ginny and Harry. All the attacks were linked. Mrs. Norris, Mr. Weasley, Miss Granger, and Miss Clearwater. They must have all done something to infuriate their attacker. Any ideas on who it could be? Ginny and Harry looked at each other for only six milliseconds. Malfoy, they said in unison. Except I don't know what Penelope had to do with it, Harry said. Maybe she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, Jenny suggested. Perhaps, but I do know that the two should... I do know that the two should go back to the tower. This is Damn. undoubtedly a very hard day for you both. What? No, just I'm getting one of my characters killed <coughs> and Prison Flowers shot me because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Just, just, just me playing the goddamn game. Not that you would know. That's right, I'm talking shit. You're too absorbed in your own bad story. Yeah. Okay. Just so we're clear. I just want to make sure. They Keep nodded in turn. Harry and Jenny went as fast as they could without actually running. Once they were in the tower, they bombarded with questions. Jenny whipped out her wand, pointed at her neck, and said, Sonorus! Everybody shut up! They did so. Quietus! Without a doubt, this is very confusing. But all that we know is that Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, and Penelope Curlerwater are all petrified. Yes, just like Mrs. Norris. God, damn. Now, if you could leave us alone, we need to figure out how to reverse the effect. So if all of you could shut up and give us some motherfucking privacy, we'd gladly answer any questions later. Not now, Harry yelled angrily. Mr. Potter! A female voice called. Oh, shit. 
Harry murmured. <laughs> he hadn't realized that McGonagall hadn't left yet. What a display! A perfect role model! I hope that you could explain yourself, Potter. Hermione... No, Hermione? McGonagall said, not angrily, really, but understandably. You get it, right, Professor? I mean, I just lost both best friends. I don't want to talk about it. Using curse words usually shuts people up quickly. I know! It worked pretty well! I need to start cussing. Maybe I can start now. Yes, fuckhead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harry was staring at his transfiguration teacher amusedly and amazedly. Wow, a teacher cussing? Awesome. Great year ahead. Wait, no. No Heron and Hermione. Shit, bad year approaching. Okay, shit faces. I need you to copy down the damn formula for transfiguring a stupid animal into glass. The new regime had begun. People actually listened and liked McGonagall now. Lessons were fun. Yeah, but now she's cussing all effing and jeffing. Yeah, that makes her worse. No. People were doing homework and cussing in their essays kind of as words, so naturally long essays were handed in. There had been no luck except for one lead for Harry and Ginny. Mandrake juice apparently worked for unpetrifying one, but Professor Sprout's mandrakes were babies still, so there wasn't enough juice. Before anybody knew it, it was Christmas. Harry had gotten Ginny a Nimbus 2000 and a necklace that cost 40,000 galleons. Of course he did, because but he's rich. But she was worth it. Yeah, he is. I don't think that he had 40,000 galleons. Yeah, that seems a bit much. She was going to give him a blowjob, but he thought that 11 and 12 were way too young for that kind of thing, so they decided to make out from sunrise to dinner time. Then time afterwards. But first they had they had to find a broom closet. The first they found was, was occupied with Percy and... A picture of Penelope Clearwater? Good dirt. The next one was also occupied. This held Malfoy and Pansy Parkinson. Gross. Then, yet another one held Crab and Goyle? Ew. Many people had had the same idea as Harry and Ginny, Seamus and Lavender Brown, Dean and Parvati Patil, Neville and Luna, Cedric Diggory and Cho Chang, Blaze of Beanie and Hannah Abbott, George and Katie Bell. What the fuck? Finally, an empty one. They, the, the, love is in the air. No. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Your teenage adult brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones, man! <laughs> and almost no supervision at Hogwarts. Look, her hormones, she's lying to you. That's just <laughs> oh. I slapped my knee, if you didn't hear it. It was a good knee slap. Uh, okay. Let's see, they made out more, more bullshit. After all this, dinner over and all that rubbish, Ginny claimed she needed to use the ladies' room. Alright, I'll be in my dorm if you need me. She winked and walked away. He marched up the stairs. Harry looked in the room. Looks like he and Ron weren't the only ones to find out the charms. Seamus' bed had its curtains closed, but there was a silhouette. Oh, yes. There were three people in there. Two oh, easily females. One, most likely Seamus. They were doing naughty things. Harry crashed on his bed. Five minutes later, there was a ping pong and an announcement. Will all students report to their common rooms at once, please? Harry stood, then he walked downstairs. Almost everybody was already there. McGonagall stepped in. We we are so sorry to report that a student has been taken into Salazar Slytherin's secret chamber. This is called the Chamber of Secrets. We have our staff trying to figure out where it is. We know it was on the northeastern side where Mrs. Norris was found. Harry spoke up. It was carried in. I'm sorry, Mr. Potter, but it was Ginny Weasley. Harry felt like he'd been stabbed multiple times. His Ginny? No fucking way. He slumped to the floor. He mustn't grieve about it. He should probably look for her. He stood and marched out of the hole, ignoring McGonagall's call to come back. Harry walked on, but he heard footfalls. He turned and saw Neville running after him. Harry stopped to wait for him. Once Neville caught up to him, Harry said, Come to stop me or help me? Well, I was going to stop you, but I'm thinking I'm going to help you. Thanks, Neville. That's really nice. God, this is stupid. Okay. They walked to the eastern wing. While Harry walked past the hospital, he noticed something he hadn't before. Hermione's hand was closed around the paper with a basilisk and all, you know, all that shit. Yes. Harry walked you, on. You've read the book. You understand how this goes. Yeah, I don't need to go over the parts that are necessary for regular plot. I just need to go over the, my parts. Just Harry Potter getting a bit more creative with his wand. Yeah, exactly. Get the fuck out of the way! Harry hissed at a snake that slithered across their path. Neville stared at Harry. The snake obeyed. Harry, how come you never told me you were a parcel mouth? A what? Harry asked, confused. A parcel mouth? Can talk and converse with snakes? I'm not sure what you're smoking, but I'd like some. That yep. is not what he said. That's what it says here. Oh. Neville looked at Harry, surprised. No, it's a dark wizard power. 
Wait, hold on a tick. At the welcoming feast, I heard a threatening message, something about killing. I could hear it because it was a snake. Wait, a basilisk. Shite! Hermione had the answer <laughs> the whole time. But nobody's died, Harry. It says if you look at it straight in the eye, you die. But nobody saw- yeah, blah blah shit. Bull bullshit. Yeah. Uh, Alright. They stopped when they heard movement. Lockhart was whistling and walking around the room. He spotted Harry and Neville. Ha, huh, what are you boys doing in here? Looking for the Chamber of Secrets, you? Same. <laughs> I, blonde I, as fuck. I am way ahead of the curve oh on, my, on my memes. Good, you can help us. Clues let us here. What clues? This article. It says pipes. There was an overflow of water outside. We were checking that, that out. And with that, Harry walked over to the sinks, finding one with a snake on it. <laughs> it did so. Lockhart jumped in the air and said, Whoop! Neville looked just, at... Just whoop? Whoop. Yep. Okay. Harry looked at Harry... <laughs> Harry looked at Harry. <laughs> Neville looked at Harry pleadingly. Harry nodded. Neville ran behind Lockhart and pushed him in the hole. Harry... Neville then received a high five. Harry waited for Lockhart's oof before jumping in himself. Harry fell to the bottom, covered in snake skin. The bottom was. Come on, Neville, it's safe, Harry called. Thirty seconds later, Neville came out of the slippy sewage slide. Lockhart was already standing with a bump on his forehead. He turned. All right, I'm thinking I'm going to go back now. Harry said, I'm thinking not. Ha, what are you going to do? Harry and Unison pulled out their wands in unison. I'm thinking you want to stay here. And I'm no, thinking you're sure. right. We all know you're a fraud, so, you know, whatever. Yeah. What? How? What again? You're a fraud. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't <laughs> tell anybody. In fact, I'm going to erase your memory. Obliviate! Oh, God. Yes. No, the, the game. The thing that we're doing. <laughs> These prison flowers are a fucking bitch, and I hate them. He's, I hate this fight so goddamn much. He's a firing his laser. Whoop. No. Do you need to kill them to win? No. They just do a lot of really annoying damage and will hit multiple opponents, so it's kind of annoying as shit. That sucks. Uh. Yeah, blah blah blah, he erases on memory. You okay, Neville? Oh my god. Yeah, I think I tore a ligament. Got milk? But otherwise, I'm okay. I don't know what the got milk is about. They got the milk. I guess. All the milk. What about Lockhart? Well, his memory's erased. Yeah, he'll be fine. Good. I'm continuing on. Watch Lockhart. Make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Got it. Uh, God. Harry ventured forward. He came across a door with snakes on it. Open! It did so. He walked into a large chamber. He saw a large statue of a All head. All this is one chapter? Yeah. God damn. Summarize, motherfucker. Oh, you want, I'm not, me, you want no, me to be done now? No, I'm just saying this is a ridiculously long chapter that's covering like half the book. All of the book. All of the book? Each chapter is supposed to be a book. That's ridiculous. That's what I told you before I started it's it. It's so silly. Yeah. You killed her, didn't you? Mal wait. She won't wake, Potter, said a cold yet familiar voice from behind. Harry got angry and turned to the voice and was surprised to find Malfoy there. He had kind of a sick, twisted smile plastered on his face. There was also a hint of smugness. You killed her, didn't you, Malfoy? I'll kill you! Harry jumped and started choking Malfoy, letting all the rage and hate flow out of him. Malfoy didn't stand a chance. Harry was pissed off the scale. Malfoy was behind it all. Ron and Hermione, easy enough to figure out. They ruined his chance to ever be a father. Penelope and Mrs. Norris probably got him in trouble somehow. Ginny, Harry's girlfriend. Perfect revenge plot there, but he wanted her to suffer. Now Malfoy was suffering, but no matter how pissed off Harry could never kill a man. Well, maybe Voldemort, but... Harry released his grip on Malfoy's throat, but Harry wasn't done. He kicked Malfoy in the balls. Hard. Malfoy was twitching and screaming in agony now. Fuck you, Malfoy. Just then, a white form erupted from Malfoy. The thing bounced around and finally came over to stop in front of Harry. This isn't over, Potter! The thing wheezed. Harry stared, loathing the creature that was Voldemort. He knew that he couldn't touch him now. The spell or whatever would go straight through him. Come, my creation! Voldemort's soul spoke... Parcel tongue. I don't know what the fuck I was smoking. You were 12. Yeah. So whatever you get your hands on. It's probably just plain grass. Literally nothing. Oh my god, this metal shit is getting so fucking old. But yeah, I'm I'm basically done now. Like, it's just a few paragraphs summoning, summarizing the rest of it. Harry basically just spoke parcel tongue to the basilisk and made it drown itself, and that was that. Nice. 
Does I'm sorry that I subjected you to this reading. I thought it was more entertaining than it actually was. Yeah. No, this fight is just a shitty fight, and I fucking hate it. Now I'm just really sad, because I had always been like, Yeah, that chapter 2 was, like, fucking really good. And then it you turned were? out... Uh, yeah, when I was young. You have such low standards. Yeah. I, I like writing the way that I talk, though. And I still do that to this day. Yes. And I have no problem with that whatsoever. I hope that you guys have stuck around with us for this whole fucking episode. Fuck off, you. If it makes you feel better, I have to live through it again. Yep, because he's the one doing the editing. Yep. It's great. Yay. <sighs> yeah, that's how the prison flower attacks. And then, boom, laser. It's a fire in his laser. Blah. Shoop to whoop. It's all of them. I don't care for that. Yep. And one of my characters is still muddled after all this time. Like, five fucking turns. It's annoying. I agree. Oh, you son of a bitch, fuck off. And the animation takes forever. And you can't skip animations? Nope. That's irritating. It's Sega days. Sega! Sega! Ah, fuck me. You got cold as fuck in this bitch. I'm gonna freeze to death. Yes. You will absolutely freeze to the death. I expelled all of my heat through my mouth by talking. Yes. For such a long time. A very, very God long time. God damn it. Fuck you, slave. Just wake the fuck up. That's rude. He's muddled. One of the enemies has this muddle thing that covers a ridiculously huge area. And I think I've only ever gotten it to work on an enemy once ever. They seem to be able to get it to work on me all the time. That's how it works. Yeah, it sucks. I don't understand how Road just took a cannon and turned it into a tank. He's badass. Oh. He's Torbjorn? Yeah. Ready to work? Yeah. And his daughter is better than he is. Sheila is Brigitte? Yeah. I believe it. Kill yourself up, bro. Get you back up. Huh, <sighs> fucking hell. Try and kill this motherfucker. So that way I can stop getting shot. I comprehend. Damn it. I forgot that I didn't give her a thing. He's the heaviest hitter. He's, He's the, the useful hit. one. I don't like how quickly he, he <laughs> flaps. It he makes me uncomfortable. All the flaps. There, and Jaha's dead anyways. Rip jaw. Yeah, these prism flowers are a bitch. Um, I, it's the worst battle in the game. But they're only in this one, right? Just as, uh, no, they are in one more fight. That sucks. Yes, it does. Plants versus zombies. Just firing in the straight line. Yeah, you know how they do. Except this time you play as the zombies. Well, Jester's dead. Because that dude keeps getting heavy hits. Why they keep getting heavy hits, I don't know. It's kind of a bitch move. There we go. Fuck you, flower. She shot the potion at herself. Yeah, it went. <laughs> She's like Anna, but with boomerang arrow. Yes. Instead of sniper bullet. Just like that. I am. I am glad you're coming. Do they have uh, boomerang arrows? No. Can you create one? No. Would you create one? Yes. 
I believe in you. I think you can do it. But... How? So you take like an arrow shaft and you take off that weird, you know, metal bit that nobody needs. Right, the silly bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you, you just <laughs> plug in a boomerang on the front part and you draw it back. So the boomerang's still in front of the string or the, the wood part and you fire it and it goes and then it goes like I'm sorry, what was that noise? What which one? The the you fire it and it goes it goes what? <laughs> it goes Okay. And then it goes and comes back at you. And then uh, you grab it out of the air and then you throw it at a friend. Yes, you're just gonna grab the arrow out of the air. Yeah. These fucking this guys are the ones that have the muddle and I don't care for them. Murder them. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Stop flapping so fast. He can't help it. It's what he does. Oh. He doesn't need to flap that fast. You don't know. I do know. Heal yourself up some more. There we go. Sheila, my monk. Now she has level 2 muddle. No. No, don't kill my monk, you son of a bitch. Fuck you. Fuck you, Baltimore. not really like a way out of it, you're just kind of screwed and you attack your own party. And waste MP. Precious MP. Why didn't he attack? Because sometimes they don't. It's really fucking weird. Strange. If you take control of the AI by doing like the cheat code in the beginning and you're playing as these guys, you can't get them to do shit. They're just fucking worthless. Strange. It's really just, does the AI, are you in a up, down, left, right thing for them? Does the AI feel like fucking you over? Then it's gonna hit you. Like that shit. Hmm. I don't care for that. Yeah. <sighs> and that's pretty much how that works. But yeah, most of my party is pretty much gone now because of those fucking flowers. Fuck flowers, dude. Flowers are I'm fairly certain if I go there, she's just gonna die super fast. So we're just gonna try and get her back into the attack. Yes. Kill this asshole, because he needs to die. Thank you. Huzzah! I hate it when the rat's confused. Yeah, it makes for not fun time. Kill this motherfucker. Haha, <laughs> you didn't think of diagonal attacks, did you, flower? Well, attacks like a knight. In chess, you see? Yeah. So, yeah. God damn it, why are you moving twice? Wants to. Poison Ivy got Titan. Shit out of you. That is not that much damage. You need to get stronger, cactus. Everyone likes a strong cactus. I know I do. Be sure to eat your, your cactus, Wheaties, so that your cactus grows up all nice and strong. Yes. Exactly that. I didn't see cactus Wheaties at the uh, grocery store, but hopefully soon they'll start carrying them. Somewhere has to have them. Probably New Mexico or Arizona. Yeah. Perfect. I've never seen a Mexico. You've never seen a Mexico? Yeah. But you have seen a Mexico. Oh. We've both been to Mexico. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's it. Okay. I mean, we can prove that. Yeah. I have, in fact, been to Mexico. 
Yeah, I could just call your dad and be like, yo. For like a split second. And then I got back on that shit. Hey, it counts. Yas. I did go to Catalina Island, which is not Mexico, but is better. Oh. I've never been to Catalina. What's in Catalina? Touristy shit. Oh, so why is it better? Because uh, touristy shit is where the good shit is. Because we got to go there on a lifeboat from the ship. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty nice. Well, the, the ferry or whatever, but... You're a ferry. That's yeah. probably gonna get it. <laughs> no, that's fine. I don't know why you'd have to refer to me as a, as a small boat that crosses rivers. Yeah. But Or a uh, mythological creature. Who is weak to steel. If you run me through with a sword, I'm gonna die. No, I think the fairies were never actually, uh, or the fae, weren't, wasn't steel that was a problem, it was cold iron. Yeah, but it's, uh... So, unworked iron. No, it can be worked. It's just poetic. It's poetic to call it cold iron. See, this range on this motherfucker is ridiculous. Yeah, it's that's like not twice, very nice. It's twice as long as all the other ones. It's bullshit. I'm twice as long as all the other ones. No, you're not. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm glad that your wife tells you that. <laughs> but she's like, who are all the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> so, is it the the white guy or the the red guy? I don't know. Let's take a look. Probably this guy. Oh, no, damn it! Hit the wrong button. There we go. It's one of them. Oh. Why doesn't it tell you which one? Because it doesn't. Classic game shenanigans. Yeah. It's almost as if it wants you to figure it out for yourself. No, I don't do that. I can kill this prison flower too. We can kill all the prison flowers. Are we? No. That seems like a waste of time. Get up there so that we're out of range of that dude. We are gonna kill most of them though. Because I want to. God damn it. That's cool. Killed my friends. Fuck you, no. Poison Ivy hates you. Oh my god, do I hate these things. What's your range? You know however long pisses you off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I probably need to save her cubes, so I don't have a ton of those. Let's walk up on here. Those. Roll up on you all smooth and punch you in the jeans. Yeah. Do flowers wear jeans? Uh, mine do. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever see a flower wear jeans before? No. It's kind of hot, not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, feed me, Seymour. It's like, oh, I'm gonna give you something to eat. I'll trust you this time. Dodge you. How does a plant dodge? You're just bad at aiming. It closed its face with its petals. Yeah, this this episode has gone on a long time. But yeah. Doesn't matter. We're going to do it. We can do extra long shoutouts if you would like. Sure. So while I do this battle and be like, oh, I guess we didn't do a shoutout long enough. And then we can find just other shit that we'd like. I somehow made my shoutout relevant. I'm kind of amazed at that. Okay, now how in the hell is that relevant? I mentioned his body of work. In, in my fanfiction. Did you? I did. I gotta be honest, I wasn't paying attention. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not too upset. <laughs> the look he just gave me! You did laugh at it though, so you were. I laughed at some bits, but then it just kept going No, on. I mean, you laughed at that, at that one part. Yeah, but you didn't actually say that in the story. That was just an extra side bit. I did say it in the story. That it, it's written in the story. Seriously? Yes. Okay. So... Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> oh, God. I have regrets. So do I. So many regrets. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us, guys. Yeah, see? Another flower down. We're gonna kill these more. I'm tired of these motherfucking flowers on these motherfucking planes. Yeah. See planes and use of the other word. Planes. It's clever, Joe. No, it wasn't. Shut up. 
<laughs> Kill this one. Why can't he send his whirlwind from farther away? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Because bad magic? Bad magic. Confirmed. Haha. Can't shoot him there. I have you now. A screen, turn on. That's a different thing. It could be the same thing, though. It's the same thing. Same. Imagine, imagine Darth Vader's name was just Cats. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. And like every time he pops up, one of the songs from the musical just starts playing, rather than the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're a strange, strange little man. Really? Yeah. You wrote that fan fiction, but the shit I say is strange. I didn't say I wasn't strange. Oh, we're using our superhero powers. Yeah. Then you can call me Spider-Man. Looking forward to that film. It's gonna be dank. Probably. No, but no, Age of Ultron got me down, man. Yeah, but this one looks a lot better. It does. But I know people freaked out about Age of Ultron, too. It looked neat from the commercials. Eh, I don't really remember people freaking out about it. They're just like, yeah, that was okay. It was just like the first one, but not as good. Yeah, the first one was great. Yeah, with weird editing. But you know the difference between DCEU and MCU is that Marvel looks at people talking about the weird editing in Age of Ultron and they don't do it again. Yes. DCEU is like, oh, that's, that's our style. Yeah, bad editing in Suicide Squad? We're going to put that in every movie. Yeah. Because Suicide Squad made $700 million. And so. got an Oscar. Yes, it did. It did get an Oscar. And yet, Harry Potter never did. Yeah. Well, that happens. It deserved all of them. Did it? No. <laughs> but Alan Rickman deserved Best Supporting Actor. Okay. I I can support that one. Yes. My mom was awesome. That's right. <laughs> I asked her to dance. She asked me to die. My mom was awesome. <laughs> That's the best response you could hope for in that situation. Yeah. Where the fuck this chaos was about. Fuck you, old man. Oh, my poor throat. Okay. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, because we still got more games to record after this. Yes, today. yes, we do. What other what other games are we? Recording? Why did we start with this one? This was a mistake. It was not a mistake, and also because you asked me. Yeah. And that was a mistake. You should know better than ask me things. <laughs> Never ask you anything. Got it. That's right. So I just tell you things, and that's just how it is. Yeah. That's gonna work. Yeah, I will in no way rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Why does he have a red cloak? You'd think that he'd have a black cloak. Huh. Maybe he just likes the color red. He's got red on. Oh, no, that is true. They did it just for that joke that hadn't been invented yet. Yeah. And then they went and played Time Splitters. her up some so she doesn't die right away. Which was the best part of the movie. Yes. Look, I like that movie. I thought it was great. That's okay. Well, it's okay that you're wrong. Yeah. I don't dislike it. Fuck! Oh, he's doing the aura thingy thingy. Just AoE heals. The aura thingy thingy, yep. Yeah. Them owies. Here, he's healing his owies. Yeah. What the fuck I, is Raijin? Uh, thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. Oh. That Raijin. Okay. Yeah. From, from Smite. I mean, I suppose it would also be in Smite, but no, that's not really. Oh, oh, you know what? Sure, yes, it's from Smite. The, the Shining Force Pantheon is playable in Smite. Yes. What's Peter gonna do with a sword? 
Look, like he just picked it up. Again. He is a bird. There we go. Fuck that battle. Okay, can I do this voice? All right. Prism flowers. My prism flowers. Yeah, they were a bitch. Cactus, I shall return with red barrel. You will pay for these. Yeah, probably. All right. Now we could just walk on down, and we could start that fight. But most of my people are dead. So yeah. here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the shoutouts while I go revive all my people, and we'll be done recording this game for today. Okay. Extra, extra long episode. Hour and a half. Goodness. Hour and a half. Just for two battles. Fuck. Yeah, that second one really sucked. But we're done with it now. So I am going to do a shout out to Steve Odekirk, a uh, a legend from the early 2000s that has not really been seen since like 2006. Okay. I don't really know what the fuck he's doing, but... You should Google it. Yeah. Let's see. But what did he do? Steve Odekirk is mostly well known for having made Kung Pao Enter the Fist, which I mentioned in my fanfiction. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, as well as the Thumb movies like Thumb Tannic, Thumb Wars, The Blair Thumb, God Thumb. They're all amazing. Go watch them if you haven't seen them. You've been um, telling me that for a little over a year and last time I've watched a single one. Yeah, we should. I have some of them on DVD. <laughs> um, and he also made that terrible Barnyard movie and show. Oh, okay. Um, but that's really the last thing. Oh, and Jimmy Neutron. Oh. Which is probably the most important thing. Let's see. Steve. Oh, Kirk. Where the fuck did you go, sir? I'm still waiting for my Kung Pao 2. Oh yeah, and he did uh, Bruce Almighty and uh, Ace Ventura. Oh, wow. He has a very odd brand of comedy, doesn't uh, he? Eclectic. It's a good name for it. Let's see. I don't think it'd be an accurate name for it, but it's a good name. You're eclectic. I am not. My mom had me tested. <laughs> you can have you tested for eclecticity? Yeah. It's, it's, it's an ism. Da, da, da. Okay, so... He's got a bunch of shit in development hell. They were going to do a film adaptation of Stretch Armstrong. And he in 2015, it was announced that a sequel to Kung Pao was in the works. But... Nothing has happened since then. Nice. So, I don't know what he's doing. Just tons of development now. Okay. Sucks for him. Hopefully we get more out of him soon. Oh, he apparently did something with that terrible Cowboys and Aliens movie. Ew. But yeah, he just kind of vanished. He was he was one of the coolest people like in the in the film industry for a long time and then he just kind of just was gone. But shout outs to that man for what he did and establishing my early 2000s humor. That's fair. Alright, so my shout out is going to go towards a game that I've picked up and we've mentioned it in this episode and the last episode. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yes. We picked this one up and I thought it was going to be a fun game. Really big. And then I started playing it and I've, I've fallen in love with this game. Yep. Yeah. I love the sense of humor, I love the endless grinding, I love the characters, I don't care for a lot of the voice acting, but uh, I can get over that. Yeah. <laughs> you may have seen that I've tweeted out some things from when I'm watching him play that game. Yes. I'll just tweet out random observations that I make with a hashtag of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty good shit. So uh, go check out those tweets as well. Yeah, I love how much there is to do in the game, but it doesn't force you to do a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and the stuff that it does make you do, it's not this long, tedious grind. Yeah. But there is a lot of the grindy stuff on the side. I like the uh, character design, some of the randomness of it. I love it. Nice. I think it's really great, especially a lot of the uh, the humor, especially when it comes to, like, Poppy. I fucking love Poppy. Poppy and Tora are great. Yeah. They are the best. Uh, so about 40 hours into it, and I'm still only in Chapter 4, because I can't stop grinding shit. He's He's been doing lots of grinding. He's got the bathtub girl, and yeah, making her OPAF. I've already got, like, all of her things unlocked while I put a million dollars in her chest. In her chest? Yeah. 
Oh. That's how you, that's how you level her up. Oh. You go to a warehouse, she has a chest, put a million bucks in there. And you unlock all of her grid charm. Nice. I like it. I like the level up system. Um I really dig it. He likes the dispatch quests, he likes the the um just the the random gotcha shit. The, uh, the jumping in to grab salvage out of the, the clouds. I've done so much of that. Yeah, I've watched him. He'll just be sitting there for hours just doing that with Rex just being three button presses and then jumping in and then grabbing salvage and doing it again. Yeah, that's how you get the money. It's cool, I guess. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing. I really am. So, yeah. But, yeah, okay. I think we're, we're good to go for this episode. I know that it was kind of a fucking mess. Yeah, we're not gonna read one that long again. Yeah, that was ridiculous. We're gonna we're gonna proofread shit next time. I know we said that last time, but I promise next time. <gasps> I don't uh, proofread. That's I, fair. I don't read. I I think that's fairly obvious by hearing what you wrote. I don't read Richards. Boo! Nobody cares about Fantastic Four. Hey, it's back now. Yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, true <laughs> enough. It, it wasn't popping up on any of my feeds. No one else is talking about it. You saw it randomly once, and you were just like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, guys. <laughs> I like that the bush has a nice blue hat. Yes. But anyway, guys, we will catch you next time in another battle. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. Goodbye. Bye.